Hey everyone, it's Tiffany from Let's Get Scrappy and it is tutorial time. Yes, we are going to attempt to make this baby and I say attempt because I'm not 100% sure I remember how I put it together, <laughs> but we're going to do it. Here we go. Um, I do have a, a walkthrough video of this on my channel. Um, but we will just quickly go through it, but it is a five and a half by eight and a half album with a one and a half inch spine. I did do um, Tamara from Country Craft Creations lay flat method, but you could do your cover however you like, but that's what we will be doing today. And this is a Country Craft Creations design team project. So, um, we'll just quickly go through the album, um, and I'm going to do the project exactly like this, but as we go, because you know your girl is going to give you some tiff tips, um, there's some things that I don't love, love, even though I love this project as a whole, so when I do it again... I'll probably change some things up, but I always like to give you guys the options and let you just, you know, decide how you would like to do it. But there is this acetate page, which we are going to do together. You do not need to do this if you don't have um, acetate. You don't even have to have another flap here, but you can just do two of these when we get to the tutorial and have that or just have nothing. So just know you do not have to do the acetate. And the acetate is also great for if you have embellishments for things not to get caught. So it could just be a clear piece of acetate. It could be acetate from packaging. Um, so don't get stuck on if you don't have this, um, that you have to have it because you don't. And then um, we're going to see if I remember how I did the the. the uh, the, 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 the diagonal belly bands, it's already starting off crazy. So, yep, here we go. And then it opens up to that. Like if we, when we, you know, I do another one, I think I'm going to try adding a little like one eighth inch gusset here. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't want to try it with you guys and it not work. So we're going to just make it as is. Again, it's not that it's bad, it's just things as you're crafting, you're like, huh, ne next time I'll do this. So these have a top loading pocket. I, I hope I remember how I even did the, <laughs> the hinge, because I literally was just playing around, took me a couple tries, <clears throat> because I wanted it to lay a little flatter. So I don't even know if I fully know how I did that. Do you guys have a lot of confidence in me as we're starting this tutorial? I know, I know. It's just crazy. And then just a little corner flap. And then just kind of a stack, staggered waterfall. And I do have a scratchy throat, so sorry. I might have to clear my throat a few times. It's going to be nice and disgusting. Okay, so then that is just two little flaps. This actually, the construction for the most part is, is really fast and easy. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. You are going to need to get your supplies rounded up. Scoreboard, cutter, paper, all that good stuff. Let me just set this close by. Okay, so for... The cover, we need two pieces of chipboard that are five and a half by eight and a half, and then one piece that is one and a half by eight and a half for the spine. So I did already cover mine, and I'm doing this one in, oh my gosh, I love this pie paw. Country Craft Creations Artisan Pearl cardstock. Can you guys see that? because I am going to make a Christmas version in the Prima Frank Garcia's Candy K Lane collection. So at least I think that's what I'm doing. <clears throat> that's the plan. Um, but I just, I love this yummy, yummy, yummy pearl artisan cardstock. It's so pretty. Okay, so I went ahead and I did do a lot of prepping trying to keep this video 
as short as possible, minus all the talking I do because I guess I'm a talker. I didn't know I was until I did videos. Um, <laughs> so feel free to fast forward if you guys don't like hearing all that. Um, but I did try to prep a lot. So that way we have, um, you know, more time for Tiff to bust out some tutorials for you guys because your girl is behind. Okay, so you are going to need two pieces to cover your, your chipboard that are seven and a half by 10 and a half. So always do whatever your chipboard size is to cover it, do two inches all the way around. Um, not, it's one inch around. So you add two inches to each measurement. So this is five and a half by eight and a half. So we're, we need seven and a half by 10 and a half. That's just my rule of thumb. I will tell you if you're a beginner or whatever and you have three quarters of an inch, or I've even done half an inch on the edges, that's okay. If that's what your paper left has, don't waste paper, just just do it. I just, I don't know, I was always taught to do the one inch, so that's how I, I most of the time do it. Ew, a uh, hell, that was nasty. Um, <laughs> sorry, you guys are like, oh my gosh, this girl is crazy. Just cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Okay, so this is just a quick way. There's a thousand different ways to do this, y'all. So um, I just come in just for quick, fast measurements, do this, but there are so many tools now, Country Craft Creations, which I will try to remember below. I, I took it out and I don't even know where I put it now. Um, the spacers, where is my spacer? I think I have it in my to-go bag. Um, but there are L frame spacers that make this for you that you can just put in your thing and put your chipboard piece down, which is nice. You can just eyeball it too. So it, it doesn't, um, really matter how you do it. Just go ahead and eyeball it. Okay. Where is my pokey tool? I swear I just brought this all over with me. And now I cannot find it. I know it's right in front of my face and I don't have a ton of stuff right in front of my face. But I don't even see my large scissors. Where did I put it? Oh, this is, this is just starting off awesome. Hold on. You know the stuff is right there. It's not messy. I don't know. Did I take it out of my room when my husband came in? I just don't know. That is so weird. Okay. Oh gosh. It was under my, my card stop. Sorry. Okay, so um just you can glue on the back. I'm a I love score tape when it comes to my chipboard covers. I can't help it. I do usually use the score tape sheets. But, um, and this is actually still the score tape sheets, but this, these were my scraps. So I always stick the scraps back on my sheet of what I don't use, and then I use it later. Okay, so we're just going to stick this down. I don't know why I did this on this side, but that's okay. Okay, and then we're going to burnish and shake the camera. Okay, and then do the same thing with your spine piece. Now, <clears throat> so sorry, I'm just going to add score tape around my edges and I you guys if you have watched my channel you've seen me do all different sizes I have done mostly the 3 8 inch and down here I usually do one inch but I'm out of my one inch so I need to order more but you can glue 
I just, I don't know. And most of this tutorial, most of it has score tape on it, just again to speed up the process. So I did pre, um, pre-work, just because this for sure is gonna be an hour long tutorial, especially when your girl can't find stuff. So this is just the basic way to do your album covers. And then we're going to burnish that down. Like so. I don't know why I was getting ready to cut. I like to just give it a little fold first. And again, it doesn't matter. It's just, you get in a routine of how you like to do it once you've been doing it for a long time. And I'm just a little, yeah, I like, I like my routine. And when you cut this, now there's, if you're new, you might want to purchase. There's a ton of tools out there to help you do corners on mitering um, for mini albums. And you can cut better than I did. I'm just doing some sloppy cutting. But you want to leave, if your chipboard is a heavyweight chipboard, you want to leave about an eighth of an inch um, gap here. Always hang on to the corners you cut off. Because if you do make a mistake, once you go to fold and you, it's not fully covered, you could just glue this right down and nobody will ever know. Wow. Okay, let's just take off our... This table is really low. One of these days, I'm going to... I say this every video. That I'm going to... Get it like a range of exactly how it should be um, with you know me doing tutorials getting a table that doesn't wiggle and I just haven't done it because when I do have free time I'm usually cleaning or crafting and I prefer the crafting part of that let me grab I'm gonna grab my mat real quick I don't want to get glue on my paper. Okay. So come in and give it a good burnish. Oh, I love this paper. Okay, one, if you have not tried Artisan cardstock, you are missing out. But this Pearl Artisan... And it's, I'm just going to tell you, it's hard for me to cover up because it is so pretty. But I just, I have to use it. And this is the, what is it, 12 by 14, I think is the size. I love that she has the options to have longer paper than just 12 by 12, especially if you're doing like big, like folio projects or albums. You can get it all just on one paper. So that's nice too. And it's good weight um, cardstock. I think it's like 80, 87 maybe pounds. Okay, so we have that nicely burnished. That is really ugly. Why did I cut it like that? <laughs> but again, I just have to tell myself it will be covered up. It's okay. It's okay. So then we just come in and just kind of fold in. Now I will sometimes on my projects, once I do this little fold in, I will fold it over to see if any excess is hanging off. And if I think it is, I will come in and cut off the little bit of excess. Some people just leave it, they don't care. They're not crazy like me but I don't like having all the excess. I definitely don't. So I'm going to cut that off a little bit. Okay. 
We're gonna add some glue in there. I just think the glue keeps it like sealed to the edge of the chipboard. That's the only reason why I like putting the glue on the inside of like right up against the chipboard. We do not have to do that. I've made plenty of projects not doing that, but I just, it makes me feel better. That's it, nice and clean. Take a little bit more off this side. Oh my gosh, my voice is really scratchy. I don't even know if that's the correct way to say that, but that's what it feels like. Just scratchy where you just need to give it a little cough. <laughs> and I definitely don't like doing that on film. That's why I've been trying not to film, but we've got to knock it out today. Before you guys ditch your girl, you're like, oh, she's never doing her tutorials. Okay, so let me just clean that up. Needed to get a little sip. Okay, now we're gonna do the spine piece. So what you need is four and a half by 10 and a half. And again, you can do your measurements if you want to, I, I usually just stick the stuff down. So you can do it like this, you know, just where it's kind of centered in and just stick it, it's not gonna matter. But if you want it to be totally straight, oops. And I'm really pushing it with the, Okay, there we go. Keep sliding out. And come in here. You could do that if you want to. You don't need to. Again, this is just for measurement. So it's a one. Doing the lay flat, the rule of thumb is one and a half inch wing on each side. I've done less, and it still works out. And then one inch up top. I'm just going to... And then we stick it down. Like so. Now burnish. Okay. So finish your other one. And then once we have this done, we'll be ready to go. And when I say other one, I mean your other five and a half by eight and a half chipboard. Okay, now just come in and work the paper. I'm just pressing it down on that chipboard. I feel like this just helps with things not cracking. Not that I've seen this one. I don't want to say it out loud because then it might do it. Ooh, I didn't like that. Um, stop doing that, Tiffany. Pay attention. Um, cracking. I haven't seen the Artisan crack yet. And I've used it now a few times. I guess I'm struggling to keep my bone folder on there. Okay, so, I'm, oh my gosh. Sorry, I'm going to Starbucks. Okay. I, I'm letting you know because so, the dude might come, so I'm, I'm just be right back. Awesome. So if he comes. Okay, I'm on a video. Thanks. Bye. You gotta do okay. Life I can't. No, I can't. Oh my gosh. Every time. Kill me now. Oh, could someone just put a lock on my door? Lord have mercy. Okay, so we're going to come in. It's so annoying. Yes, that would be my husband who had to tell me he's going to Starbucks to get himself some food and coffee and for me to keep a lookout for the guy coming to replace our garbage disposal. What, am I just going to leave this video? No. Did you have to go get coffee? No. Oh my goodness. Okay, and I'm 
I'm just, I'm really annoyed. I'm just going to say this, that I put the white side down instead of, I wanted the tan side on my chipboard. But, you know, we're just going to keep it going. I'm going to take off just a little bit because I can see a little layover. So this is just one way that you can do this. So you have it like that. And we're going to glue that down. And then just a slight angle. So it'll look like that. And then I'm going to show you on the other side. I've Again, I've done this. I don't know which way I love the best. So I, I try different ways. Just whatever mood I'm in. I try something different. He has had ample time to go to Starbucks since the plumber left. And now he decides to go. When you know the guy's coming back, like the guy's gonna be here. And no, I, I am just mad annoying. So yeah, there might be a pause. Ugh. Man, I tell you. Okay. So, if you're one that doesn't like, you know, the chipboard to necessarily peek through, which once you do all the layering, it's not that huge of a deal. You can just come in here and fold this all the way down, which is what I used to do all the time. I just, there was a lot of bulk. So, it's just, you know, figuring out the bulk piece. Okay, so let's push that in. And I always hold it because it takes a minute to set. And then I come in and press that in there, then squeeze the glue out. Okay, we got that one done. Press it in to the chipboard. Squeeze it out. If none comes out, that's fine too, because we're going to angle that anyways. Okay. So it'll look like that. And let's just give it an angle. This is already taking way too long just to do the cover. Okay, we have that done. I hope, I hope, I hope this comes out okay. <laughs> okay, man, there's something weird right there. So, if you do it like that, you have no chance of chipboard showing. This side, you have a slight little chance, but you also can come in with like your white gel pen and get that, which I might just do that. Because it will bother me if I see a, um, you know, a little brown poking through my Christmas album. Okay, so let me just, let me try. So I have a white pencil. Let's try that first. Yeah, there you go. That's actually good. Can't see what I'm doing, but... I'll cut the inside. Okay. So, uh, let's put in the shadow. It's not as dark as it looks. But you also can do your white jelly pen. And just try to get in there. I don't know what it looks like to you guys, but it is covering it. Can you see that? No, it just looks the same. But it is covering it. <laughs> I promise. For some reason, there's like a shadow on that. Okay. So. My score tape, you can use the glue. But we're going to use the score tape that I just had in my hand. Oh, right there. See, it's always just right there. I don't know what it is about a craft table that blinds you to every little thing that's actually on the table. Okay, so... I like to come in about an eighth of an inch down. Again, that is just me. I don't like seeing glue, even though it dries clear. I don't like seeing it seep out 
on the outside of the cover. And so I like to just put down a strip of score tape, but you still can use wet adhesive if you want to. And then I do glue on the rest. Now you can get your scoreboard back out. Sorry, I had to get a drink. So you can come in here and do it like this. And that way you can ensure everything is straight. If you don't like doing this method and you've watched my channel, I just... Take it like that, take it like this, and then line it all up and it's straight. So you could do it like that too, whichever way you want to do. I'll show you one of each. And when I say straight, the straightest it can be, there's nothing straight in crafting. <laughs> I've had you guys comment saying, how do I get things so straight when I'm matting? And so, oh, it must be the camera because I don't know that there's one time that my matting is straight on these projects. Just saying. It happens to me every time. I, You know, and I even dry fit. I do all that good stuff. And then it's just not, yeah, just not straight. So I'll put this on that side. We're going to do it like this. So I push it up. As I'm pushing it down, I'm pushing forward to the top. Then we're going to come in and take this, like this side better, and just, I don't go all the way up to the edge of the other chipboard, but you can. Before this sets, I just want to do a little, so when you do it like that, there's a little bit where this is up, and that's okay. So you could do it like that. Do you guys see what I'm talking about? How this is not totally even. This one is a little bit up. That's fine. I'm just going to make sure I do the same thing on my other one. It does nothing to the book. It'll look like this here. So it's totally fine. There are some designers who come down even further and give it that just kind of a, a grace of, you know, just... The cardstock is in between. If you do that, you want to make sure you have good cardstock. Because all the opening and closing, you just want to make sure. So then this one, this just needs a little, a little help on this one. We're going to do it like that. And then I will have it where, see how again that is up a little bit. So on this side, this one will be up a little bit when I go to match them up. I am so sorry, I'm scratchy and now I can, <clears throat> excuse me, I can feel it getting a little bit non-scratchy, a little cloggy. <laughs> so disgusting. I don't know why. Okay, so then you could just come in, don't press it down all the way yet until you have where you want it. So I'm just leaving a little bit where it's a little bit higher. I matched up here good. I kind of check, move it wherever I need to. And I always say, now, always dry fit your chipboard, one, to make sure the two big pieces line up, meaning these two. If for some reason they don't, then... On your albums, just make sure one side is flush, is um, lined up, you know, flush. And then flush, 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 not flush. That's disgusting. Um, if you, I'm just saying, if you're two, if you have your two pieces and one is a little bit taller than the other, have the um, have it just be tall on one end. That's gonna stand up, so your book will stand flat. Just trying to make sure this glue, because this paper is a little sheen, 
So I'm just pressing it in until it sets up. Just going to put a little under there. Don't need to, but it just makes me feel better. Okay, so we have that. Now, and you guys let me know, I normally will go through and do all the, the cuts at once. No, I do not have um, cutting guides. There's no way I have enough time to do those plus tutorials for you all, so I apologize, but I try to go as slow as possible um, doing these, but let me know if you like to see all the cuts in the beginning or as we go along. Okay, so I'm going to take my scoreboard down for just a sec. Okay. So, this piece to cover the spine is 6 by 8 and a half. It does not have to be this big. Again, I, I typically will grab whatever off cuts I have on my desk from my bigger cuts. And then that is what I'll determine. But for the purpose of just you guys, like... You know, you could do this however you want to. So you could lay out a full sheet if you want to and put it down. Um, I do like mine to be bigger than wherever these are because if it lands right with this, then it bulks up. It just keeps getting bulkier. So I do like my piece to go a little bit wider than that. And I'm just dry fitting, which it looks good. Okay, so I'm going to get my score sheet. <clears throat> I did not prep this one. And I'll just show you guys how to use the score sheets. So this is just, I mean, it's not rocket science. I'm not some professional at using a score sheet. But just in case you're curious. And again, you don't have to use this. I just like the base of my book to be very sturdy. So I just will come in and just put this down. Like so, you can cut this off or just get your little exacto knife. And so then I put this back in my little stash where all my sheets are. It's nice and easy. Okay, see, he just got back. He didn't need to come and interrupt my video to tell me about Starbucks. It is just up the street. And you would have thought, did he come in and offer to get me some Starbucks? No, he doesn't do that. He just was going to get himself some Starbucks. You know, I, if, there was a second where I thought, oh, is he going to ask if I want some? Nope. Negative. That's not what was happening here. Definitely not. <laughs> okay, so that is your score sheet. This is going to be a long video. Just get your drink, get your craft on, whatever you all got to do. It's okay. Life passes by too fast anyways. I really wish this was like where you guys like could like a you know some type of a I would say a live like on Facebook live but I can't do that first of all and there's no way that I could do this plus look at a chat and go because I would never finish a project okay hold on I think I might have this a little too long just want to make sure I don't want it poking out I'm gonna take a little bit off and of course, now I got the sticky stuff on there. And I'm really just taking off a sliver. Or at least trying to. Ugh, the glue. Oh, now he's gonna be loud. And yes, my husband is very loud and has a really deep voice. Those who get on Country Craft Creations um, Zoom, which is a lot of fun if you want to join something like that. We do it twice, twice a month. Um, and I think it is $10. 
a month if you want to do that. If you buy it at the beginning of the year, you get a, a discount on the year. Oh my gosh, now the plumber's back and he's loud too. Okay, this is going to be an exciting Zoom. But, um, not Zoom, <laughs> tutorial. If, ooh, I don't like that. If you guys um, want to join that, that is a fun way to get to know other crafters and you get to craft along um, with each other and there's just a lot of like conversations and stuff, so it's a lot of fun. But that's what I'm trying to think of like, I don't even know if like, I mean it would have to be Zoom, but where I could do tutorial and actually talk to you guys. Or I could just, you know, start teaching in classes but I still don't know that I can can I talk and teach at the same time I don't know okay normally I like to put glue in my seam before I put this down but I didn't do that I don't know why I like to it makes me feel better <laughs> okay so let's get that actual spine done perfectly and then come in and press it in Oh my gosh, they're so loud. The plumber was here to look at the garbage disposal, even though I told my husband, who does not know anything, like he's a big girl when it comes to stuff like that. I'm the man of the house. Um, he asked me, you know, to look at the garbage disposal. It wasn't working. I first asked him, did you press the reset button? He's like, what? And I said, did you try the reset button? And no, he didn't. He did not. Not that that worked, because I did that. And then I looked inside the garbage disposal, and I was like, well, it's all rusty. We need to get a new one. That's that's not a good, you don't want to have a rusty garbage disposal on the inside. And again, that could be because your girl puts, like, you know, uh, Clorox, Tylex, whatever, down the drain. That's not a good thing to do for pipes. Just saying. And I know people don't say it. I know it's not good for the environment. But I like it clean. Um, but then I also, when I was looking in there with the flashlight, he has like, I don't know why, but there was like 10 grapes in there. It's like, just because it's a garbage disposal, doesn't mean you put all your food down there. It's supposed to be just the food that is like, you know, little bits or what's what fell in the sink. But you don't want to put like, you know, those who put your potato peels, the skins when you're skin, um, peeling a potato, you don't put those down there. That's too much. I can't handle all that. Just saying. I don't know what I'm talking about, but there you go. Um, so anyways, so of course the plumber guy comes and he's like, oh, well, it's just, you know, it's fine. It, it, I don't know what he did because I, I don't go out there. I was in my craft room. But then I heard him say, but it's really rusty in here. You guys should look at getting the new one. Yeah, had to pay him for that. Way to go, Joseph. So, but at least he went and picked it up and is putting it in for us because your girl wasn't going to do that. I have crafty things to do and Joseph definitely, he has no, he is not, he's not that guy who's going to try to attempt doing things like that and act like he, he knows what he's doing. Although, um, hold on. Okay. So just a couple things we need and I'll get back to this funny story. So for, these are just the two hinges. You're going to need this one for the acetate hinge. So it'll be two and a half, two and a quarter by eight and a half, and then these are our score marks, and we'll do this together. And then this hinge, we will do, but um, I'm not going to put it down yet. Or if I do put it down, it might be temporary. I could always peel it up. Um, three and a quarter by seven and seven eighths, and then we're going to score at a half inch, one, one and three eighths, one and seven eighths, two and a quarter, two and three quarters, and let's just hope that I did that right. Because again, you guys, I was just playing. I was just, I, I I haven't watched any tutorials. I don't know if anyone has done this like this. I'm sure they have because this is not like something new. I just literally was like, huh, let me just try something to get it to lay flat. That's it. I have, you know, I don't know. We'll see. Okay, so back to the story of my husband shouldn't try to do stuff around the house. I pulled up to my house and I look at it. I'm like, why, why are there weird, like, it was like a shade of pink color on the front of the house that was slightly different. And I was like, what the heck is that? And I was like, did somebody come and try to touch up our house? Because my husband's good at calling people. He just shouldn't do stuff. And I was like, and did they use our trim paint for the house paint? 
So I go in and ask him if he did it and he had this embarrassing look on his face like he was so embarrassed and he's like yeah I was like you do know that was the wrong color right and he's like yeah okay is it still like that that was like a couple months ago yes it's still like that I don't even care right now I'll fix it next year but yeah that's why he shouldn't do anything okay so for the hinge I don't know why I tell you guys these things but you know just Press that fast forward button if you need to. Okay, so come in with the three and a quarter across the top. We're gonna do a half inch, one inch, one and three eighths, which is just three little lines over, and then two and three fourths of an inch, two, nope, 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 don't do that, nope, one and seven eighths of an inch. So let's go back. I messed that up I don't even know why I said that number half an inch one inch one and three eighths two nope gosh Tiffany stop saying that one and seven eighths two and a quarter and two and three quarters so here it is don't follow Tiffany because she can't talk or see what she's doing okay so let's take that off Now, we are going to put score tape on the back. And this is um, a floating hinge. So, I am going to, I just want to first, I'm going to just shave off a little bit on each end. Because I want to make sure when it folds over, it doesn't impede on it laying down on the actual spine of the book. So just take off like a sliver, just a little sliver. Well, football games are now on, so maybe they'll, I was going to say, maybe they'll be quiet. That was silly. They'll be quiet until they're yelling. And then, of course, the plumber guy probably isn't even going to, like, do all his stuff because he's going to be listening to the game because I already heard them talking about football when he first came okay so that goes down this is our actual we only have two signatures so this is our actual um, Hinge, and then this is going to be what actually just this little section is going to lay down on the actual album. And again, I really, as I was making this, so I'm not one who sketches my stuff out, I just make it, you know, as I go. And then a lot of times I come back and then <laughs> write down all the measurements. I try to write them down as I'm going, but that doesn't always work. And I, like I said, I played with this a couple times, so hopefully we have this right. But we're going to find out right now. This is, I think I have it right, I think. So I'm just folding these ends in. Just like that. And come and take our little score tape off, or you can glue. Oh my goodness, this artisan is so yummy. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Today's going to be a long day because it's just going to be tutorials. I don't have to travel though this week, so that's good. So I just folded those up and I did a bad job on that fold. That was not a good fold. So like this little three-eighths of an inch one, you can fold back and forth just to work the paper. I recommend doing this all the time on any paper just to loosen up the fibers and, you know, give it a good crease. But this is it. This is the 
hinge, I just created a little bit of excess. Now, when I did finish the project, I was like, huh, I probably should have, let me see how I like the way that measures up. Um, I probably should have made this like a half inch in between. So you can do that too. If um, you want to add a little bit more of basically like this is, you know, kind of like a gusset. So I wanted it to be able to lay over that first page. I'll just show you again. So I wanted it to be able to, well, let me do it this way, to lay over the bulk of this. So I needed at least a quarter of an inch. This is 3 eighths of an inch, but Ideally, I probably would have given it another half inch and there's still room, you know, here to be able to do that because you can't go any further. Otherwise, it'll stick out of your book. Um, but this still works. It's still it's fine. Like I said, this is just something I was like, oh, maybe I would have did this. Who knows? OK, so I'm going to right now we're going to just set this aside, but I am going to do something. Why can't the score tape? What is, it's right in front of my face. <laughs> Every time I have glue everywhere. I am going to put my score tape on. I do like this. Um, when putting the book on there, again, I wouldn't use a chintzy, cheesy, not cheesy, cheap paper if I was going to do with this hinge just because this is going to take a lot of weight, you know. Um, but I do like it because then I could put my page, you know, down the seam. And if I have flips and flaps, it's not going to impede on the actual spine of the book. I'm sure there's several different ways to figure out how to get to this little extra gusset too. So it could be like the, I think, what is it called? The L method where you have, <clears throat> excuse me, um, instead of doing it all in one piece, you're doing it in separate pieces. I don't know. You guys tell me. There's a lot of different ways to get this result, I'm sure. And when I was doing the project, I was going to, going to do it with two, what do I have on my tape? There's something pink that keeps coming off of it. I was going to do two, um, the, basically the inside of the covers, I was going to do exactly the same. And then I decided to change up at the last minute, the back of the inside cover. Glue everywhere, just everywhere. Okay. So this is what it should look like. And if there's a long pause, it's because I can't breathe. <laughs> so we will only put this down here. It'll go down like that. And then we'll put our pages on. You could do that right now if you want to. You could measure and put little tick marks. All you have to remember to do is that Try to keep, you know, because this is smaller than the book. So try to keep this in the center so you have equal distance from the edge of the spine to the top and the edge of, not the spine, the hinge, edge of the hinge to the bottom. And if it's not perfect, that's okay. And I don't press down all the way until I usually open mine up and make sure it goes kind of flat across. But there you go. You also can move it over a little bit if you feel like this is getting too bulky because once you fold it up, you need to make sure you have at least like that half inch give right there. Okay, so there is our base. So we have all that. Oh my gosh, I'm so thirsty, you guys. Hold on. And I might need to leave and get water at some point because I'm almost out. <clears throat> okay. So we have that. What are we looking at? Is it like five hours now? I don't even know. Okay, so let's get going. Okay, so I showed you this one. This is what you need for the acetate. We're going to do the inside of the cover first. So 
So let me find that. Okay, and here is what we need for the inside of the left, you know, the left side of the cover. <clears throat> You're going to need a piece that is five and three quarters and a little bit less than eight and a half. If you don't do that, that's fine too. I just like to give myself a little leeway so nothing's poking out of the book. But a little bit less than eight and a half, and then we're gonna score at a half inch. You'll need a piece that is six by a little bit less than eight and a half, and then we score at a half inch and then three, three quarters of an inch. We need two of these for our pockets on the inside and they are three by nine and a half, and then we're gonna score half inch all the way um, around the three sides. And then one piece, this is gonna be our diagonal belly band. So four by four, and then we're gonna cut it in half, and then we'll go from there. And see if it works, because I honestly, I don't remember how, again, I was playing, trying different things, because I wanted to do some different stuff. And I just, I just start cutting, and I, yep, there's no drawing things out over here. Okay, so let's do these two pieces first. And tell me, do you guys need me to show the scoring or does this work? I know for beginners, you probably do like it. That's okay too. But um, put it in your scoreboard on the six, with the six inches across the top. Score at a half inch and then three quarters of an inch. I already have my score tape on there. Your next piece, can you guys see? Yes, you can. And it's starting to get a little bit darker. So let me just try. Nope, that's darker. Nope, nope, nope. We're just gonna have to go with it. Okay. Yep, I'll try to lighten it up at the end. Um, let me just turn on this other light. Hold on one second. If you're new to my channel, sorry, <laughs> I don't edit, so you get the full deal, all my mistakes, everything. That's just how we roll over here. Um, so for the next piece, for uh, with the five and three quarters across the top, just go ahead and score. You could do it with over here. I'm just doing it because my writing's right there. Um, we're going to do a half inch on this side, which here would be five and a quarter, or your paper's like that and you ignore my writing and then you do your half inch right here. Okay, so we have that. Let's score our pockets and then we'll put our scoreboard away. So half inch on all three sides, but you could just go half inch and then at the nine, turn it half inch and do that for both of them. And then for the acetate hinge, and I think I did this right. Again, we will find out. We're going to find out. With the two and a quarter across the top, score it a half inch. Oh, I have this the other way. Sorry, like that. Half inch, three quarters of an inch, one and a quarter, and then one and three quarters, like so. And we're going to see if that works out. So... Let's put our scoreboard away and we're just going to start getting these put into the cover. So we're going to fold this down. Give it a nice crease. Fold the next one so that we have a quarter of an inch of a gusset for all that bulk. And I, you guys know me, I mat. So my book is really full already without photos in it. If you do like to mat, you might want this a little bit bigger. You might want a 3 8 of an inch gusset. You might want a half an inch gusset. But if you do that, you got to make sure you're looking at the rest of the book <clears throat> to ensure that you have room. So that's what this one would look like. And we'll put that in in just a second. Let's miter the corners. corners take your next piece since we have our scissors out we'll miter corners there okay and fold this over okay. 
like that. So that's ready to go. Let's get our pockets ready. And I'm just gonna cut all the way through the lines where the lines meet of all the score lines. Like so. I'm gonna miter just a little bit on the top because sometimes things still catch. And fold those over. We'll give it a good burnish to get that crease. Boop. And it does make it a lot easier if you have sound effects. Boop. Just saying. Give it a try. <laughs> Same thing here. Usually just for me, if I'm doing like a project, I will go through, I will cut all my stuff first. Because I don't like picking all my tools up all the time. So normally I would go through, I would tape everything first that I want taped. Then I go through, I, I cut it all. Just kind of, you know, I don't like having to get my scoreboard out and then put it down and get it out and put it down. So that's what I tried to do. It doesn't always work like that, but. So again, you're just folding these all down. Just like so. Okay, so let's put these in the book. And I'm going to, when I go to do the hinge, I'm, I didn't know, I put it on top of my page. It might work better if I put it under my page, but again, I'm not trying, I'm doing this book exactly how I did the other one, but just giving you guys like ideas on how to do it. Okay, so get your book out. Let's get rid of this little stuff. Okay. So this is going to go on the left side. Like so. So if you're using score tape, you can just do it like this. And I just line it up, make sure we're good. And it is a little bit shorter than that eight and a half, but it's okay. I just kind of center it. On this though, I think I might add a bead of glue just because of this artisan pearl cardstock. I want to make sure that glue or that glue, that tape doesn't ever come up. But now you have two. Okay already see I have a little bit of glare with this artisan in the window a little bit of sheen okay it looks pretty straight so I'm gonna press it into place isn't it so fun and satisfying making your own book from scratch Now this is not my favorite part, where I know for some people it is their favorite part of making mini albums. I just, I, I don't necessarily enjoy this part, but I like the end result. <laughs> okay. I am like moving in slow motion. I could totally feel it. So first, I just wanna dry fit to make sure I don't need to cut any excess off. So whatever you do, you do not want to impede on that seam. So I always come in just a little bit off of it this way. Okay, so I feel like that is good. Yes, okay. Because if I had to make any changes now, I would want to do it before I stick it in. And if you stick it in and you still need to make changes, you'll figure it out. It's happened to all of us. Okay, and then I'm just going to come in. And again, I'm not pressing anything down yet until I know that I have it exactly where I want it. So I have to look top and bottom. I'm not poking out the bottom. Everything still folds up nicely. Yes, it does. Okay, so here's where I was saying, when I go to put the hinge for, you know, the other, the acetate, I put it on top of this page. 
it might work better going under. I don't know. I have no idea. This is just, you know, trial and error. I might try it again on another project and we'll eventually see. And like I said, I might next time put a gusset on this one. Um, like an eighth of an inch gusset or it could still be a quarter of an inch and still fold up fine. Hold on, I need a drink. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, so we have it like that. Now we're gonna put our pockets. These go on the inside of both these flaps. Give it a dry fit. Just to make sure that they don't go over. If they go over a little bit, that's okay. You just don't want it to go over a lot. Okay, I just want to see. I know I'm over. I can't tell. There we go. Okay, so that's still good. It's over a little bit, but it's not going to show again once everything is on there. Uh, do I like that? I don't know if I like it. It might be a little bit too much for me. Oh no, it's okay. <clears throat> okay, let's put this down. I'm gonna grab my tape, my other tape after this too. Oh, I used a little scrappy do. See y'all, I don't waste anything. <laughs> my little scrap on there. So I, I just do, I always do just the bottom part first. I think I'm going to do it this way. Can you guys still see? Okay. Yep, they're out there talking football. The dude's not, like, paying attention to his work because he's trying to listen. What you saying? Okay, so before I fully press it in, that feels good. Try to, whatever you do, try to always dry fit and don't fully press. Even though I've fully pressed and I've still been able to lift up if I've made a mistake. So hold on, I want my tape. And we're just going to stick a little bit down here. You don't have to do this. It just helps with things catching. Ugh. I got a little bubble. There we go. Now, I'm going to stick these down. I'm not going to put glue on these. I'm sure it'll be fine without. I just want the main features. Like so. But burnish really good. Shake that camera, Tiffany. Shake that camera. Okay, so we have that one on. Now we're gonna do this one here. And voila. So now mind you, my husband had the plumber go get, you know, he went to go pick up a, a garbage disposal and I didn't hear my husband tell him any like price range, nothing. So the guy either could have got a really cheap one or a really expensive one. I don't even know, are there really expensive garbage disposals anymore? I feel like they're like cheap now. I don't know. But my husband's just the type of person like, okay, just whatever, just do it. Just do it. I just get some tape. I don't know when I'm going to do the Candy Cane Lane actual paper because I still have some Halloween stuff that I want to do, but hopefully I'll be able to have it soon. And burnish, burnish. Like so. Okay, so this is the inside. 
So that's it. Just like that, like that. Boom, chicka boom. Okay, so this is gonna drive me a little crazy. And just make sure it is straight, okay. It is this one. Oh my gosh, got him, okay. Ooh, I bent that a little bit. So all I'm doing is right here, I'm gonna cut that a little bit because that's gonna bug me. <laughs> it's poking out a little, and yes, it's a pocket, it'll survive. I don't mind it poking out a lot, but it's poking out just right there. There we go, okay. Um, so now we're gonna do our hinge hinge. Here's the true test. I don't know if this is gonna work. <laughs> I really, I didn't, I didn't write it down right away. And the one I did write down when I went to go do this, it was not right. So we're gonna say, okay, so I'm just gonna fold these and then we'll put our tape on. Cause I just wanna make sure I have it folded in the right direction. So just fold on all these creases. We'll come back if we have to go the other direction. You can flip it the other way. Cause we're not gluing anything yet. Move that out of the way. That was not a good crease. I'm definitely crooked. Okay. <clears throat> so just keep folding. They're gonna go different directions in a sec. I just wanna make sure I have it figured out correctly. <laughs> okay, so I know for sure this is going down. Okay, hold on, like so. That's what it should end up looking like. And I'll show you in just a second. So put on this first half inch, we're going to put our score tape. Like so. And then, and you could put score tape on actually all of this because you're going to put paper on there, but I wouldn't. I would just wait till you decide what paper you want. So we need score tape for sure here because these two are going to stick together. So that next half inch after the quarter inch. And before we stick anything, I will open it up and show you guys so you can see where the tape is. Okay, so these two will stick together like that. Yes, and it just reinforces it, and then we're going to put score tape on the inside here. And that's what is going to um, hold our acetate in. Again, you guys might, I don't know why I always say again, because it's not like I said this before. I just have a problem and can't stop saying it. But again, no, just kidding. Um, the, there might be another method to doing acetate. This is just me playing in my room needing something to happen and trying to figure out how to make it happen. So if you have a better method, go for it. You do not need to follow this. Oh my goodness. You guys are going to have to tell me, can you hear my husband yelling right now at football? Oh. Okay, so this is what it looks like with the score tape on so that first half inch get score tape then you have your quarter inch you skip and then you do it on these two then flip it and it's on the one that is closest to um the quarter inch so i'm going to take that one right now and we are going to fold in this side into that just like that Okay, got that just a little crooked. Okay, and then leave these two like so. Just leave those for now. We're just going with it. Just go with it. Let's miter some hold in these two. 
I mean, it's not as difficult as I'm making it look because for some reason I'm making this way more difficult than it actually is. I just want to make sure since we can't chat, if you have any questions, you can actually see what this looks like. So this is the flap that's going to go on to our page. So again, just hold these two together. This is the one that is going to get glued down right here, like so. And I'll probably add a little bit of glue to that. Okay, so just come in, and I probably should have dry fit that, but I didn't. I'm sorry if my head is in the camera, because my hair is all over the place. That looks a little crooked, I can't see. Are we good? Are we good? I just don't know. Well, good enough. Dig it down. It's going to have to work, whatever it is. Okay. <clears throat> so, now for this, I am going to show you the flap. So, it would end up like that. You can put your decorative paper here. But I'm just going to quickly show you. And I need a drink. Oh, my gosh. Okay. <clears throat> So here's my acetate, and it just is going to go in like so, and you leave it like that. Now on this one, I did cut this a little bit shorter than eight and a half. Um, you don't have to if you don't want to. I just did, again, I didn't want it sticking out. So, I mean, just you just need to make sure that it has equal distance if it is a little bit shorter. And you can see this acetate is very thick where the other one is really, it's not, it's still thick, but it's clear. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what I do is I take off my tape from the top. I put my bottom in where I want it. It doesn't matter how it goes. I don't always go to the edge of the... Um, score line right there but you can <clears throat> sorry I'm trying really hard not to choke right now um, and I think I have it even but now I can't see I think I might have just hit it and the reason why I only do one side is just in case I do need to adjust it so let's just see what this looks like And then I add my pom-pom trim here, so that's why it's a little bit shorter, but you can make this bigger. You could pull it out a little bit more if you want it to go all the way over with no pom-pom trim. <clears throat> did I say the size that I did? I don't know. But I cut this five and a quarter by eight and three eighths. So again, you could do it by five and a half, by eight and a half, whatever you guys want. Just whatever you feel comfortable with. But that's what that is gonna look like. And then I'll have my white chunky pom-pom trim right there it's gonna be very cute so I feel good about that so I am going to what is on there take this side off like that I'm gonna add just a little bead of glue a little boop boop just in case usually with the acetate it sticks really good I've never had problem with it coming undone but I don't know Okay, so we have that on there really good, nice and burnished. And I do like, when I'm doing albums like this, I do like to, I don't put my hinge in the middle in or my pages in the middle. Because <clears throat> I like to be able to be able to lay this flat. So if you had your hinge right here, this one, and pages on it, you wouldn't be able to get this all pressed in good. 
So you have that, and yes, in this collection, there's some cream base, there's some white base, it's all mixed up, so it's all good. But it looks like that. I think it's gonna be really cute. Um, and then when I did my, let me just grab it. When you put your, it could be pom-pom trim, it could be any trim, it doesn't really matter. But when I go to put this down, oh my gosh, she's yelling. It's crazy. You guys still see? Okay. So when you go to do this, so as you can see, you're going to glue it on there. And I did, I actually did um, score tape and a bead of glue. You could do your hot glue. What, I don't know what hot glue does to acetate, actually. So I don't know if I'd do that. But I put that down. Well, on this one, you might not be able to see it, but the other one you could see through. I took a little flat um, trim, a little flat ribbon, and glued that down too so it's black on the other side. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but that's just what I did so you couldn't see any glue or tape, anything like that. But this is going to be cute with this big old chunky pom-pom trim. Okay. I mean, any pom-pom trim will work. So, that is that side. Now let's do this. Oh, oh, but let's do this belly band. I forgot about this. Okay. <laughs> We're going to go for this. I don't know if I wrote it down right. Okay. No, I'm not going to put that there. So, get out your cutter. And we're going to cut on the diagonal. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just going to cut this. At least I think this is what I did. <laughs> now come in and just at the one inch, just like that. Wait, wait, what did I do? No, no. <laughs> Score it first, I think. Aren't you guys so happy you waited for this tutorial for Hot Mess Tiffany to do a tutorial? Okay, so I think I came in and I scored half inch on each side. Don't quote me yet. Don't do this yet. Let me just make sure this is what I did. And then did I come in and cut at the inch mark? You would have thought I would have played with this and tested it out first, but we just go with the flow, right? Just go with the flow. So this now gives a one inch diagonal belly band. And then you just stick it on your paper wherever it lines up. <laughs> that is pretty much what I did. Okay, so. I just cut these little Star Wars wings off like that. And we have our book. And then I just wherever it lined up is where I stuck it. So that looks pretty good. That's where I put it. Let's see if this works with the artisan. Um with the art glitter glue and artisan. Okay, so kind of just find where it lines up. Lock so. There we go. And then just press it down. If you have glue, you have to, especially with artisan, you have to let it sit some. And I can see that I have some excess here. I don't like that excess. You have a lot more wiggle room with the Artisan Pearl because it's sheen. But this is basically what you would do. Again, I've never tried this before. I'm sure it is not new. Just was playing with paper, cutting, which is what I'm sure most people do <laughs> when they create things. 
and I'm just trying to make sure I want to make sure it is on there good I definitely would do score tape with artisan just because I are not artisan but with the pearl artisan just because the sheen for it to go a little bit faster so you have that and then you could do the same thing with this one And yes, I'm just holding this in my hand because I don't feel like moving everything because, are we done with the cutter? Maybe we're done with the cutter. What am I doing? Why do I have the cutter still up here? Just a half inch on both sides of that. And then I cut off, I lined it up at the one inch and cut it off. So I have a one inch strip. I'm gonna put my writing down on the bottom. Get my, I don't know why I'm calling this my little Star Wars wings, but it's making me think of Star Wars ships. <laughs> Cut those off. I have a mess. It's like everywhere. Oh, they are in there talking football. Dude is supposed to be working. Not watching no football. <clears throat> Joseph's just in there making friends. Dude's talking. Okay, so. Boop. Boop. Like so. Get your glue. Ooh, he just swore. How are you going to be in my house swearing? Say what? Okay. So top and bottom, you could do bigger squares. And if you want a double belly band, like diagonal belly band down here, you could do that. Just have fun with it. Just play with it. All you have to do is just a little bit of dry fitting to make sure everything works out okay. And if, oh, I don't like the way that one. So I have to make sure this can open. I didn't fold my creases very well. My hair is just all in the way. I can feel it's all crazy. Okay, so I'm just kind of holding this in place. And definitely put your belly bond, belly bonds, your belly bands on after you put your acetate hinge down. Because see, you have to make sure that that still folds and that this isn't underneath that. So you have to do your belly bands last. Okay. So hopefully that made sense. But there you go. And then all the photo mats, you just take all your scraps and make your photo mats to tuck in there. Now let's do the right side. Oh my gosh, is this like five hours? I don't even know. Okay, right side. Coming at ya. So here's what we need for that. We need a piece that is four and a half by six and a half. We're gonna score a half inch like so. Five by seven and a half, score a half inch. Five and a half by eight and a half, score a half inch. That is our um, stacked, staggered waterfall. And then this piece is four and a half by four and a half. And we're gonna cut at the, a diagonal. So we'll show you how to do that to get that triangle closure. Again, Tiff just trying to be fancy, which was not fancy whatsoever. So I'm just mitering the corners. Miter sticky stuff on my scissors. Okay. So who got all of the Prima Twilight? Can't wait to see if you're on scrapbookers of country craft creations on Facebook please share if you do this project even if it's in different paper I love seeing everyone's work even if it's exactly the same 
or totally mixed up. Like that is a lot of fun too. So be sure to share your projects. Okay, so first we're going to cut this. So um, we are gonna cut at a diagonal on this one. So let's do that. Should have brought my smaller trimmer over here. Okay, so can you guys see? Let me make sure I have it where you can see. So just line up the corners. Doesn't have to be perfect again because we're gonna trim stuff off anyways. And then we're gonna score at a half inch. Like so. So just half inch like that and then we'll fold it and take off the little Star Wars corners. <laughs> I'm telling you, if, okay, if none of you watch Star Wars, you don't know what I'm talking about. But if you do watch Star Wars, well, maybe you still don't know what I'm talking about. I mean, this actually looks like a, a little, like, what, pilgrim hat or something. Um, just some of the, you know, the rebel ships. Rebels? No. I don't even, now I can't even think of what it is. Have these little wings. So you're going to cut those off. Just cut them off. And now we have a little hinge for our triangle closure right there. That is all that is. But first let's do these. Let's put these on. So we, we did the half inch. Again, I didn't show it because it is just one half inch on all of these. So you just put it in your scoreboard and do that half inch. And we're gonna flip our book. I'm gonna put this base page, I'm gonna put a bead of glue. And then just come in and line up corner to corner. Just make sure I'm even. Are we good? So I'll make sure that little, I can't tell if that's hanging off. Nope, we're good. Burnish. It's just in there chatting away. The dude's gonna charge us by the hour. <laughs> Where is plumbing? So, and I just eyeball this, you can measure, oh my goodness, my battery's about to run out. Um, if it runs out, you guys know I can't edit, so we'll just have to do a, a part two. Okay. I mean, I could walk over and actually get my charger. I just don't want to do that. <laughs> Let's just hurry it up, Tiff. Hurry it up. I mean, as you see, like the... I mean, this really is an easy Alma. It looks, maybe it doesn't even look like it's difficult. I feel like if I looked at it first, I would think there was a lot of craziness to it, but it's just the initial part. Um, but it's fairly easy. And I said before on the walkthrough that you could also make it so it's a folio without the pages in the middle and make the pages be like stacked on top of like you can keep building this up if that's something you like to do that's probably maybe for more advanced crafters that are good at looking at something and deciding they want to do it a little bit different so this just needs to come in. Again, I'm just eyeballing, but whatever you do, do not go on where the the um, actual seam is of the spine. 
because you have to be able to fold that up with no problem. So I always just come in a little bit, like for this instance, it's a little off to the right. Like so, get all, it is okay that glue seeps out. That means it is totally sealed all the way through. It's gonna be so cute. Okay, <clears throat> so then I'm just going to write. I do a magnet here and a magnet here, just like that. And when I do it, I put it on this part first and then stick it, stick it down. If we have enough time, I'll come back through and um, put the magnets on there. But now let's do the pages. So the two signatures. So... The first one, and these both are the same, so you can cut these now if you want to cut these. So the first two, I mean the two bases are eight and a half by 12, and then you score at, which let's get our scoreboard out, but we'll do that in a second. Then you're gonna score at, you guys see that? Um, five, five inches, 10 inches, then you turn and score at a half inch. Then we are going to need for our front on the right side is gonna be five by seven and we're gonna score at a half inch. These are our little flaps. And then this one is on the front as well, four by four and a half, score at a half inch. And then there's an inside pocket on the front of that and that is two and a half, a little bit less than six inches. And then we're gonna score through, um, half inch all the way around. I didn't write that down, I see that. And then on the back, this just gets glued to the back four and a half by six and a half. So let's do this one. Put your scoreboard. So yeah, let me know like what you guys like. This is poll time. Do you like getting all the, the measurements first to cut all your paper? Then we come back through, score it all together. So at five and then 10, I flipped mine and did it at the tens, doesn't matter. And then you turn this in a half inch all the way down. Um, let me know if that's how you guys like it where we come in that way you have your scoreboard at once and then we start it putting everything in the book. So the five and a half by seven, we are going to score at the half inch here, just like that. This is on the back, your four by four and a half with the four across the top, score at a half inch. Your pocket just gets scored on three sides, a half inch, half inch, in there, half inch all the way around on those sides. Okay, so let's put our page one together. I might have to get my charger, we're gonna see. Okay, and we are going to, oh, hopefully I'm doing this right too, but we're gonna go ahead and cut off this half inch, all the leave that one up top. So starting with like the two inches we have left here. And I just cut on the inside of the hump of the score line. And we just have this to close up our page at the bottom. So it'll look like that. So now let's just go ahead and fold these other lines in. This is our base. This one folds the other way. And I can see I did not cut very even. You can use your trimmer, but you'll be able to see if you have some crazy, crazy cutting happening. So it goes like this. This part goes on our hinge. So don't worry about that yet. Fold this and we're gonna close up the bottom. So I'm gonna use our, our glitter glue. This paper is so pretty. 
Okay, so that is now closed. Make sure you didn't close it all the way. Okay, we're good. So this is the base right now. So this is the front. This one should be on the back. So now on the front, we're gonna do our little flaps first. So let's miter all the corners of everything. Miter all the corners. Okay, and for the pocket, go all the way through all the score lines. We're gonna cut that. I don't know why I have to. I have to turn. I have to flip and turn my when I'm. It's just easier for me to cut. So, all those little lines you want to cut through. Miter that. Now we're going to get everything folded with a nice crease. Okay. There we go. Now let's get it all on there. So we'll put our big piece on first. Let's do that. Again, just eyeballing the center, make sure this piece, this little flap is on the back and this is facing down the opening. So just come in, eyeball. Get our little one. And again, if you're using score tape, if this is easier for you, you can just peel back a little bit. So I'm going to put this down because I want to know. Again, I'm just eyeballing, but you don't have to. And there was somebody who asked what eyeballing was, just in case. And again, no judgment. Um, it's just... Finding like the center of where you want versus, you know, you could come in with a ruler and measure, put a little tick mark. You can use your mats as measuring. Um, I did that in the very beginning because I'm very OC and crazy, but then I just had to tell myself stop it because I will never get projects done <laughs> because it's a lot more work. So be sure to dry fit this pocket and make sure that you can still fold everything up nicely. I could see like I'm, I need to come this way because that is not gonna fold nicely because I'm, I'm up on top of that pocket right there. And I think I still might be, I might have to refold this a little bit. Let's see, this one will fold fine. This one is not going to. And it could just be how when I folded it. Yeah, it's like at a weird angle. I think it's down here. Hold on. Let me just kind of force that corner in a little bit more. Hold, please. My fingers are not working with me today. I'm really just, this corner is off a little bit. I think it still is. We will see. Okay, so we have that down. It's gonna drive me crazy. Okay, I'm just gonna rescore this. It does happen sometimes, that's why I say to dry fit, for sure. We're going to see. I'm just going to come up a little bit and make that a little... We will see if 
if it lets me re fit it. Okay, now I'm gonna take off a little bit more of my corner. This is so slippery with the tape and the artisan. Okay, so let me try. And I should just be sticking this down, but because I want to actually use this base, <laughs> I want it to be nice. Okay, I think that is much better. Better, top, 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 top. Now push that over. And it could be because I came out. I know this is going to give you guys a heart attack, but it's okay. Maybe not. No, I'm going to go too far. <laughs> I should have used my tool. I don't want to do that. I was going to put that on there wider. It's nothing like a tutorial with Tiffany without some boo-boos. Again, I just want it to fold good. That's it. I think I can. Oh my goodness gracious, Tiffany. You're about to, is it still going? Oh my gosh, what if like I had stopped recording? That would have been really bad. So I'm gonna slide this over a little bit and make this pocket just a little shorter and that will solve all of our issues. That might not be enough. There we go. I don't know why I didn't just do this in the first place. But this is how you fix things, just saying. It is not a big deal. Okay, so now back to getting the four corners. Okay, so let's see if I went far enough. Yes, finally, Tiffany. Okay, why didn't you just do that in the first place? We were like on a roll too. And then your girl just messes it all up. Okay, clickety clackety down, a little bit of tape. This will all be covered, so don't worry about that. Boop, boop. Tell you, it works better if you get the boops. Boobity bobbity boop. And then I did add a magnet here and here. So I'm just gonna put a magnet. Just to remind me to do the magnets. Okay, now come in and make sure this is all creased. Okay. And again, once you get all the layering, like, um, can you see there's like a little bit of an edge and I did that with the black too. That's fine, I'm just gonna bring my decorative paper all the way over and still have that nice, even white edge all the way through. And this, we are going to use, and again, I brought it with me, but I can't see where I put it. Nope, I didn't bring it with me, it's right here. I'm just gonna stick this on so you guys can see where it goes, but not place it all the way um, because I'm gonna decorate this one, but it's just gonna go like this. I, you could do just like a quarter inch on each side from here, here, and then this looks like about like, I don't know, what? Three quarters of an inch, kinda sorta. So just, you know, this is literally what this back page is. So you have, this is the front that we just did with the flaps in the pocket and then here is the back and this is the same piece right there that does not look like the same piece is that the same piece I feel like this is bigger oh no okay I'm just losing my mind um, this is the exact same thing so I did cover the inside of this just where you could do like a little bit of journaling 
you can leave a portion of this open to have as a tuck spot. So you could just put the glue just like on the back right here. But that is this page like so. And I use my corner chompers on here and throughout the book. You can, you don't have to, totally up to you. Let's go to page two and you have the other base of that. So you see how like simple if Tiffany doesn't mess up her scoring, it is to do the pages. All these little things are killing me. Hold on one sec. I don't know why I don't bring the garbage can over with me when I'm doing this. Okay. Page two. And I'm just going to give you um, also for the top photo mats that are, okay, hold on. Um, let me grab my charger. We might run out of time and that would be terrible <laughs> when we only have just like a little bit left to go. Your girl will get in a rhythm soon. Oops, I just knocked it all over. Technical difficulties here, people. Okay, so we have that. I'm going to plug in my charger. Hold on. Oh my goodness gracious. It's going to wiggle. I don't know if I'm on. <laughs> We should be good. Let's hope. Okay, so two pieces. This is just a disaster of a tutorial. That's okay, right? Um, uh, these are the inserts that go on the, the pockets up top. So two that are four and a half by eight. I just angled the top. I did use my corner um, punch for those. The angle one, and then I did the round one down here. Um, you don't have to do that, but that's what I did there. And then for page two, again, you will have this one here. And stop moving. Okay, then you will need a piece that is, this is on the front of page two. So a piece that is three and a half by eight, and I'll show you how we're gonna glue that down. Then on the front, you will have a piece that is uh, two and a half by four and a half, and we're going to score it a half inch on those three sides. That is the bottom pocket of this. Then the middle pocket is three and a half by four and a half. We're going to score three, um, half inch on three sides as well. And then inside that, I do have a large tag that is two and a half by seven. We'll go inside there. And on the back, you just need two pieces that are two and a half by eight. That's it. Just use those scraps that are left on the table. So we've already scored this one. Um, we, it's the same thing you do that we did on the first page. And then we're going to cut out this piece here. And you can use your trimmer or just go a little rogue with Tiff. It is never even when I do that. <laughs> Just so we're clear. Never. Not once is it even. So I'll come in, fold these, and crease it down. Fold it backwards. So now this little duty is on the front. The first page, it was on the back, but this one's going to be on the front. And then we're going to fold this in. To close up our bottom. Oh, that was a terrible fold. Why am I struggling folding paper today? That just was not good. I don't like that little bump. Now it's gonna be all weird. Just trying to cut that off because 
I don't like it. So we're gonna have lots of time to dilly dally. Okay, just stop it, Tefania, stop it. So I'll just fold this over. It is what it is. Okay, so this is the front, and here is what we're going to do. Um, set this aside for a second, get these pieces out. We're gonna put this together first. So let's, let's just cut everything. Go through all those score lines, miter a little bit, a little bit. Through. Probably turn that up a little more. And what happened to my light? Hold on one sec. Okay. And cut through these through all the corners. I don't have um, any glue or tape on that because I'm not going to do anything with that. I just tuck it in. It's easier for me. You don't have to do that. You can make another pocket. You could have it be two short pockets. Um, totally up to you what you would like to do. So now fold it all over. Did I get this the right size? Oh, yes I did. It looked way smaller. So fold these, and fold these, not these, this. Um, this is just a guide, so that's all I use that for. So let's put the small pocket on first. I just undo the bottom. Make sure I'm still in frame. Yes, I am. And just line it up the best you can. If it is, just tiff, 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 tip. If it's off a little bit, that's okay. Just center the offness <laughs> and have like even, even space all the way around. Why is that not sticking? Because it's pearl, sheer sheen artisan. A little bit of tape. I mean, we literally are almost done. I don't know why I'm taking so long. Maybe because I always take so long. And fold that up. And we are done with that pocket. Grab your next pocket. we're just gonna tuck this into the other pocket and then stick it down so I just go all the way up to that score line again it's just this has been way easier for me to do stack pockets it's a nice little guide I like it there we go and then your tag goes in here you can Cut the corners, do whatever you want to make your tag out of the things. So I added a lot of the journal cards. Then what we're going to do, I'm just going to use my tape runner. And I'm going to put tape on three sides because we're making a pocket on the back. Or I should say on the inside. So this just gets glued down to that. Again, dry fit though. Make sure you dry fit, dry fit, dry fit. Just make sure we are matched up. I'm a little bit off there. I mean, it doesn't matter. I'm not sticking it all the way down. Okay. And, oh, I think I put too much. <laughs> I just realized I put tape all the way up to the top. Luckily, that's just some... Um, repositional so you can just rub that right off it's 
exfoliate those fingers. Okay. So now we have this little um, pocket here. So that's how I made that. It's just glued on three sides. So put your glue actually on the little piece, not the big piece. Do not do what I just did. Okay, so that is, ooh, ooh. Tiffany is missing something. I am, what am I missing? I know I'm, I'm missing something. We have another flap, people. Sorry. We have this flap. I totally did not cut that. Okay, that is going to be five and a quarter by eight and you score at a half inch five and a quarter by eight let me see if i have my artisan out hold on one minute five and a quarter by eight no i don't I'm gonna cut it really quick. Sorry about the loudness. score that half inch. Can't believe I forgot a piece. I'm just, I'm out of my rhythm. I just gotta, I gotta get back into it. Doing tutorials. I'm sure you guys are like, yeah, girl. Can you hurry up? Tease us with this stuff and don't get it done till a week later. And Burnish that down. Just let's make sure it fits. Yes, it does. So just like so. And let's stick this down. Ooh. Lots of glue happening here. So we're going to always just pull it up to one corner match it up make sure everything's good before I totally stick it all down and because this is glue I need to hold it just a little bit longer it's moving on me okay there we go I need to let it set for a second needs to be a little little tacky on the sheen paper first. Okay, so now we have a flap. Got a bubble. I don't like having a bubble. There we go. Okay. So we will write magnet. Magnet. So I know to add my magnets and then to the back side, which is just literally these two flaps and we are done 5,000 hours later. Because your girl struggles. Oh, that was a bug that just hit the window. So fold these. You can make this bigger if you want. You don't have to do, I'm using the eyelets, grommets, whatever those things are called. <laughs> I just poked, um, I measured, I put my all my paper down and then I measured the center and then um, what distance I wanted from. And that's where I had like my three little dots that looked something like this. And that's what I laced my 
eyelash trim through. So this is the back side. We're gonna come right here, line this up. gonna be so cute when I get Christmas paper on it and I don't know I might not do the little um, type of closure there I might come up with something else I have no idea oops I don't want to do that yet we will see could be cute with some like a candy cane twine like red and white twine going throughout maybe I'll add a few more I don't know we'll see but there we go that is the back so I just took my for those who don't know how you can have a hole punch I use my um oh my gosh what the heck is this called oh my goodness I just went blank but it's we are memory keepers Mm-hmm. Yep, something. I'm telling y'all, when you do tutorials, you just lose your mind. So you just come and poke hole, poke hole, poke hole. That's it. That's how easy that is. But that is page two. Now, let's see if I can show you how to put the pages in. So, there's two ways you could do this. You could stick this down right now. And then do your pages. You could put your pages on here and have it all put together, put it on. I personally, I like to have my pages out to work on. It is hard to work on in an album, especially if you have big chunky things like this. I don't like it. Um, but I'm just going to put this down. Yeah, you would put your decorative paper down first. I'm going, I'm not going to put this all the way on. I'm just going to show you guys a little bit because I do want to use this, like I said. Okay. So, just eyeballing again where I want it. I know that I need like a half inch on each side. The thing's moving. Coming up. Okay, that looks good right there. Not totally centered, but it's okay. Yep, that's good enough. So that is where I would land that. And then you would come in and put your pages. So this is page two. Ooh, ooh, oh, that scared me. My writing's upside down. Okay, so page two, which I always do my back page first. So it would come on and just go on here. Take your tape or glue, whichever you want to do. You can miter the corners. You don't have to. I usually do. I don't know why. I feel like it goes on better. But you would have that on like so. Um, and I mean, let's just, we could do it. It's not that big of a deal. and straight there's sticker sticker maker okay come up a little bit Is where I would want that. So let me just make sure. Should have did that before. Yep. That's what I do. I mean, I love like that extra gusset. It gives me a little bit of wiggle room. I like it. Okay, so let's just hope that I put it all down correctly. Yes, I did. So we have that. 
Then our next page. This is the front. Are we still recording? Yes. I'm just going to flip this up. So open the inside. And you're just going to come in here. Very sticky today. Normally with my score tape, I would leave one side or both sides of the tape on. Probably should have because it's just really sticky. Just really sticky. Here's what we are going to do. When you have wet glue, you have a little bit of wiggle room. The score tape, not so much. <laughs> not so much. I can't even see where I'm at. What is going on, Tiffany? What is your dealio? Okay, so. And again, before I'm sticking anything down, I'm just kind of making sure everything somewhat lines up if i didn't feel like it did like if i could see tape there i'm gonna take it off all of it it's not down yet so it's okay i don't i don't to my pages i don't want my pages off so i'm gonna go all the way down to the bottom i feel like that is better that needs to match up with the back piece. So are we good? I think we're good. Just press it down, peel that out. It's a process, people, it's a process. Ew, a little fuzzy. Okay, the upside down handwriting is freaking me out because I keep thinking that I put it on backwards. But there you go. So. That's what this looks like. And once you get like all the paper on here, it gets a little bit heavy and weighted. So it lays really nicely. But y'all, we are, did I do have it? No, nope, that's still three eighths of an inch. Okay, yeah, we're good. But there we go. We got through it. Oh my gosh, nice little chunky monkey. But I can't wait to see what you guys make with it. So please share if you're on Facebook group, Country Craft Creations. I mean, scrapbookers of country craft creations. And um, I will get started on my other tutorials so I can get you guys some goodies this week because you guys have been so patient. But thank you so much for watching. If you do have any questions, um, please, please, please ask in the um, comments below and I will try to answer. But make sure you put... I did do um, a magnet on this inside cover it did ended up not really working out because I had too much paper on there but it lays nice and flat anyways with everything so you guys don't have to use magnets um oh and I did a magnet here like that but you don't have to use magnets at all the weight of all of this is fine you don't have to do it it's a fun little album. Can't wait to see what you guys make. Thank you so much for watching. If you did like this video, please give your girl a thumbs up. And if you have not subscribed, please make sure that you do. So that way you could see future country craft creation design team projects, as well as the tutorials that eventually I make with them. <laughs> I promise I try not to be so far, but you know, just life happens. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.